Hi and welcome to my channel, I'm Simon and this is the start of a reading vlog with a bit of a twist, an Italian twist as I am having a mini break in the lovely city of Lucca in Italy and as I'm in Italy I actually probably should say ciao e benvenuto sul mio canale which I think is Italian for hello and welcome to my channel. Anyway Luca is one of the most beautiful cities I've ever been to. I have been here before but only literally for an afternoon and an evening when I was on a trip basically going around Italy and it was the first stop but I fell a little bit in love and I've wanted to come back since and so decided it would be nice to have a lovely very very chilled just city break in this gorgeous walled city that's easily walk aroundable. And so you're probably gonna see, not like loads of attractions and tourist stuff, but more like wandering around the streets while mooching. I like a good mooch. Mooch around the streets, popping into probably quite a few bakeries and restaurants. There'll be probably quite a lot of food in this vlog. Generally having a very chill and relaxed time, which is me kind of throwing caution to wind really, because normally when I go away, I like to have like a proper, um, plan of everything that I should be doing, like an itinerary of every day. Yesterday arrived at around two and had some food before checking into the most lovely apartment, which I'm in now. And then uh, just had a potter around, went for some amazing pizza. And today I think it's gonna be very much a pottering around day. That is a clock tower I would really like to go up. Nothing major planned. So I think over the next however many days slash however many minutes it is for you in this vlog, it's probably gonna be lots of scenes of streets, some bookshops, because I really want to go to a few. There's one English bookshop particularly that I wanna to go to, but I think that's open tomorrow. And also food, if I said streets and food and bookshops, possibly like a cathedral or two or a church or two. So that is kind of the plan. And as it is a reading vlog, I thought I'd tell you about what I am reading. I have started Tell Me About It by Sasha Naspini, which is actually a book I bought in a different edition when I was last in Italy in Rome last year, which had the title Neves and also just had a picture of a woman in like a field. And Europa have republished it like this with a chicken on the front because the chicken is quite important. It starts off with a woman called Neves whose husband goes out to feed the pigs and basically dies and the pig starts to eat him and then the pig doesn't have a very good time of it either. And then it's about how Neves deals with her grief after her family have visited and then left, a daughter who she has a very tricky relationship with. And one night, um, well, she decides to bring a chicken in because she's not sleeping very well. So she brings in her favorite chicken, sleeps like a log, but then the next day when they're watching telly, the chicken suddenly just goes completely and utterly still. So she phones the local vet to work out what's gone on and a phone call starts, which sees an unraveling of both of their histories. I've not got very far, but that's how far I've got in. And the unraveling is commencing. It's really, really good. It really made me laugh at the beginning. I mean, it's a very dark start, but there's some really, really funny scenes, especially with Neve's internal dialogue with her daughter. And um, so yeah, so that's what I'm going to be carrying on with. And my plan is to read Italian books while I'm here. I shall take you along as we get about our day, which we're going to be doing very shortly as we have a wander to go and just, well, I think today's gonna be one of those days where we have a full day of getting sort of an idea of where everything is around us. That's kind of a nice way to start holiday, I think. And then maybe tomorrow we'll have a few things on the itinerary here and there. And we do actually have a dinner booked later at a restaurant that is actually literally below us, two floors below, which sounds amazing. And the landlady here, kind of gave us the nods that we should really get to it. And they only had one table available all week. And that is tonight at eight o'clock. So we're gonna go and do that. And this menu looks corking. But yeah, I'm waffling on. Let's go have a wander and grab some more food because I've already been out and had breakfast, which you'll have seen. So there we are.
Morning everyone, it is Monday. Look at this hair, it is wild. I have had my second 12 hour sleep while I've been here, which is just bonkers. Um, so anyway, yeah, I didn't film any chattiness yesterday. We ended up just like spending the whole day out wandering the streets of Luca and popping into bookshops and having lots to eat and just having a lovely day. So I didn't read very much. Between coming back in and going to dinner, guess what? I had a nap. Absolutely sleeping like a loon. I keep being, um, my attention keeps being caught by these beautiful flowers. Anyway, so isn't the apartment just gorgeous? I have finished. Let me, no, let me tell about it. No, I have finished Tell Me About It by Sasha Naspini. And I was really shocked to learn that Sasha Naspini was a man. I don't know why, but um, I really enjoyed it overall. The story, uh, let's talk about the story first. So the story is, as I mentioned yesterday, about a woman called Neves whose husband has died and she makes a phone call to the vet because the chicken that she's taken in with her to keep her company has become uh, transfixed and hypnotised by an abbot on the telly. And as they start having this conversation about what to do about this chicken, secrets are revealed from their past for decades and it is twisty and turny and twisty and turny. All these revelations come that I can't say anything about because I don't want to spoil it for anyone, but... There are myths and legends, there is witchcraft, there is ghosts, there is illicit affairs, there's uh, the love that dare not speak its name, and um, the story of a very, well, the very sad, the, the tragic story of a young woman and how these two people may or may not have been involved. And just this cast of characters that comes to the fore, all told through a telephone conversation. And I was really impressed by that because, yeah, I just thought it was incredibly done. I don't know why I'm so surprised that Sasha Naspini is a man. I think it's because the voice of Neves is so strong as this woman who is just, it's almost like she's reveling in her guilt. It's almost like she's reveling in her grief as well as being, oh my God, my arm's gonna go dead. Sorry, it has to just get a little bit more comfortable. So what was I saying? So yeah, Neves is clearly a woman who's deeply in grief, but at the same time, she's kind of reveling in it and lashing out all at once. And I think that's really powerfully written, but also just the story of this woman and her yearning and desires of old and now and the future, I just think is written beautifully. So yeah, the voice was really, really compelling. And I will definitely read more Sasha Naspini. I might have a look around today and see if I can find another one. If you want to give something short and sharp, go. The only thing I will say actually is sometimes it did feel like it was going on considering it was just a telephone conversation, but I think that might be a me thing because there are no chapters in here. And I really, really struggle with that. And also because of it being a phone conversation, sometimes there'd be these very short shot bits of banter and then there'd be like almost monologues from each of the characters. Anyway, I thought it was really, really good though. So very chuffed to have read that. Um, I can't see the book that I'm going to read next. One second caller. The book that I'm planning on starting next is Eleanor Frente's Troubling Love. I've had an up and down relationship with Eleanor in the fact that I didn't really like the first of the Neapolitan quartet novels. And then I really didn't like The Lion Life of Adults, but I loved The Lost Daughter when I read that in Italy last year. So I thought, oh, if I read her again in Italy, another short, sharp one as well, maybe I'll love her again and maybe that's it. We've cracked it. I just have to go to Italy every time I want to enjoy a Ferrente, which that's no bad thing. I'd quite happily go to Italy all the time. Um, and speaking of Italy, the plan for today is to walk the walls of Luca. I really, really want to go to Etta's bookshop, which is the English bookshop in town, which opened, I think, just before the pandemic and has managed to survive it, which is just incredible. So very excited for that. I'm sure I may pick up a book or two. I really want to get Domenico Stanone. I'm really, really eager to um, read his books, which is interesting because he's also a Europa author. So there we go. I promise this video is not sponsored by Europa Editions, but if they ever want to send me on an Italian book reading spree, I'd be more than happy to. If you don't put these things out into the ether, who knows what's going to happen? What is going to happen is I need to sort my hair out. Anyway, this is going to be one of those days, walking, eating, having a nice time, heading to a bookshop. I have booked a really, really nice restaurant for dinner. Um, 
And I'm just letting you know that in case we get as happy as your bonkers or I have another nap or something that I don't talk to you again until I have finished this. But I will try and have a chat with you when I've read some of it. Um, and I'm sure if I hold some books at the bookshop, I'll have a chat with you about that. But now I need to get ready to walk the walls. Slight change of plan from walking the walls. We're now biking the walls. Oh, doot, doot. it's a treat. Ring that bell. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Hey up everyone, it is later on and as you've seen, I had the most fun not walking the walls but cycling the walls in this two-seater four-wheel bike thing that was just so much fun. But yeah, it was great and uh, I think Chris was slightly terrified with me being in control of the driving seat because that never happens anyway <laughs> in control of many things but never the driver's seat usually so that was just really really good fun a little bit random last minute thing but those can often be the best can't they i would highly highly recommend if you ever come to luca just doing that because honestly 12 euros for an hour of absolute giggles and delight and then after a bit more of a wander went to oh can't see that properly can you um, Etta's Bookshop. Oh, I'm doing this very badly. There we go. Is that better? Yeah. Etta's Bookshop and got to have a really lovely chat with Julia who runs the bookshop and who is a dream. And she's named the bookshop after her cat Etta because Etta apparently is the true boss. She's truly in control talking to people being in control. Anyway, it was just really, really lovely and just chatted about what was like selling and what it was like to set up a bookshop in the pandemic. And it's such a beautiful bookshop. It's absolutely gorgeous. And I did get a couple of books, but I have to say, Julia was really kind. And not only did she give me this book bag for free, which I thought was a lovely thing of her to do, she also gave me a copy of this for free because I'd asked what she would recommend somebody read, like some Italian fiction that's translated into English. And I'd never heard of this one. And she said it's her favourite short story collection, one of her favourite books. It's Catastrophe and Other Stories by Dino Buzzati, and it's translated by Judith Landry. And I was like, right, well, I'll have to read it then. So I was going to buy it, but when I got to the till, she's like, no, 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 it's my recommendation. You have that copy. And I just thought it was very, very kind of her. I bought myself... Uh, this book here, which is called Within the Walls, which made me think of Luca, even though it's not set in Luca, it's set in the small Italian city of Ferrara, which I'm assuming might be a real one, maybe it's not, but it's the first in a series of books that made up the novels of Ferrara. And the bag just sounded incredible. Also, Julia said that um, he's an incredible, incredible writer, and I want to read more modern classics, so... Yeah, I'm going to give this a word at some point. But um, it describes it as conjuring up the brief lives with brilliant intensity of a young woman abandoned by her lover, a girl captured in a faded photograph, a Holocaust survivor seemingly back from the dead, the death of a heroine, a silent witness to the city's first wartime atrocity. And I just thought it sounds like it's kind of vignette short stories turning into a novel, but actually 
that becomes a series of novels that are the novel of Ferreira, even though they're individual parts. So does that make any sense whatsoever? It makes sense to me. Really, 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 really excited to read this and just so thankful that I also got Catastrophe and a lovely tote bag because who doesn't want a bookshop tote with a cat on it? I mean, frankly, we all do, I'm sure. So yeah, that is what I've been up to today. Going to actually get to reading some of Eleanor Ferrente now and possibly actually dipping in to a short story or two from here just to see how it is. Although, I don't know, I feel like I need to savour this, but at the same time I should be reading books. I should be. I should not be doing anything bookish. Bookish stuff is fun. I need to keep reminding myself of that. Anyway, I'm off on the tangent. So, that was a lovely, lovely time. I am now going to head to some... Elena Frente before we head off to this really, really lovely restaurant, which is, I'm not even going to try and pretend that I can remember the name of it all, but I think it's on the Via de Elsie. And yeah, I've heard it's amazing. The woman who owns the apartment said normally you have to wait weeks to like get in, but there are a couple of spots when I looked on their website. And so booked straight away. And uh, yeah, really, really looking forward to that. More food. Can't get enough of the food in Italy. I mean, I probably can, but I won't, and I won't be stopped. <sighs> I might have to be airlifted out of this country, or harpooned, or something. Anyway, I uh, will speak to you all when I've read some Eleanor and have some thoughts on it. I don't even know what it's about, actually. So there we go. Exciting. Wild. Hi everyone and happy Valentine's Day to you, lovely lot, belatedly, for that is what it is. I will show you what I got as my Valentine's card, which was the same one that I bought Chris. Spooky, that said there weren't that many nice ones available in Luca, but also is where we are going later today. And that is, well, the tower in town has trees on the top, which I just think is amazing. I'm so excited to go up that and see the views because it's a gorgeous day. Also, very childishly, but I think you'll probably all find it quite funny. Um, Chris got me, oh, I've ruined it now. Oh no, I did it all wrong. I was also given these marshmallows that I have wanted for ages when I've been wandering around the town, but I don't think that shows it very well. They're in the shape of a quilly. So there we go, that is what I've got for Valentine's Day. What I'm reading this Valentine's Day does have love in the title, but it's troubling. And that is Troubling Love by Anna Frente. One thing actually I wanted to mention was, what do you do about like, do you get random postcards and stuff as bookmarks? Because I saw this postcard of Puccini looking like an absolute sort in a bookshop yesterday and thought, oh, that would be a nice bookmark for one of my bigger um, Europa editions. Anyway, I also have a naked... I'll try and find it at some point, a naked David that is in the short stories that I bought, which I haven't started. I might start them later on today. My thoughts on this so far. So it's about a woman whose mother's died, Delia, and her mother, Amali, Amalia, has died in mysterious circumstances. And we hear about like, well, this is the thing, it's very confusing. So she dies, they had a really difficult relationship. I love the writing about um, Naples. Um, that's really vivid. Anyway, she dies, they've had an awkward relationship. Then there's this mysterious man who's been seen at her flat that has a name that strikes fear from childhood into everyone, but is also the same name as a place. And so it's mysterious. It's kind of got ghostly goings on. There's telephone calls and ghosts and stuff, which is very like, tell me all about it. Or is it, what's it called? Tell me about, I can't 
I'm dreadful with names, places, and all sorts of moments. I just want to call it Neves by Sasha Nispini, which is the last book that I read. So I should be able to remember the title of, frankly, shame on me. Anyway, it's interesting what they've got in common. But this, to me, is just a bit... The mystery's almost so mysterious, I don't really know what's going on, to a point where I'm not sure that I'm 100%. But I'm going to give it more time and see how I get on. I'm only a quarter of the way through and I shall report back later. But for now, I'm going to finish getting ready. Then it's off up the tower, probably get some lunch or maybe get some lunch, go off up the tower, already popped out for breakfast, had it on a bar like a local in the cafe. It was lovely. And then, yeah, lunch. Yeah, lunch, tower, dinner later, food, 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 beautiful views, more meandering through the streets. Just another lovely day in Luca. I'm absolutely loving it. I've slept so well. I'm having constant 12 hour sleeps. It's mad. Anyway, I'll catch up with you later. smug about the staircase being lovely and really simple and now I've just got to the actual tower and it's a little bit more terrifying <laughs> Morning everyone, it is when the last morning of the trip. I haven't talked to you about this headboard and I feel we need to because I am obsessed with it. I would love a headboard like this. I wonder if you can get them in the UK. It's just the sort of nana chic that I am into. 
Anyway, I had a lovely time yesterday going up the tower, which was amazing. There were oak trees. I was correct. Then found this, I had just been saying, oh, I don't think I really need to have lunch today. Turn the corner, restaurant open. They were doing carbonara, job done. And also I have more fried, <laughs> fried dough, which I'm now not touching for a very long time. I don't think they do fried dough in the UK, apart from Bruto, which I went to with Melanie once in London. The plan is to sort of get ready, pack, and then have lunch before we get the train to Pisa and then fly home mid-afternoon. I wanted to say though, yesterday was Valentine's Day and um, what I ended up doing is giving myself the Valentine's gift of DNFing Eleanor Ferrante's troubling love. I just was finding it a bit bamboozling to the point where characters and places had the same name. We had this woman's mum turning up as a ghost sometimes in the most weird but like I love that sort of stuff normally but for some reason it wasn't just sitting well with me I did love the way she writes about Naples I was intrigued at the start but sadly I think in its efforts to be mysterious it sometimes is a little bit elusive and in a way that I found a bit alienating and so because it was Valentine's Day and it's all about loving yourself as well as other people. I thought I would uh, love myself enough to DNF troubling love. I'm still going to take it home with me. I might read it at some point. I feel a bit sad because I bought this, I think, in Italy last year. Not not my favourite. And I'm just beginning to think maybe me and Ferrante aren't meant to be. I have one more at home, which is The Days of Abandonment. Ironic that that wasn't the title of this one, considering I'm abandoning it. But I will at some point read that one. That's the one that actually interested me. The team at Europa have said is the most me if I loved uh, The Lost Daughter, which I did. This actually, I think, sits more with the Neapolitan Quartet, maybe because of its setting. I don't know. Anyway, didn't love that. But I am absolutely loving Catastrophe by Dino Bazzati, translated by Judith Landry. It's also translated by two other people. Um, e. R. Lowe and Cynthia Jolly. I don't know why they're not on the cover, but this is the book that the lovely Julia recommended me at Etta's Bookshop. And the short stories are brilliant. I've read four of them. They're all incredibly dark and have twists, which I really, really enjoy. Or well, not twists, actually, let's say surprises. The first one was kind of comedic horror with, about a building that falls down. The second one was... Um, oh, really sinister about an unknown catastrophe that's clearly going on while people are on a train. And that's the title story. And then I read Epidemic, which has a really sinister, again, quite sinister, but kind of enjoyably so, tone to it. And then I just read Landslide. So as you can see, they're all kind of about quite tragic things. And the next one is called, it's called Just the Very Thing They Wanted. Um, let me see. Uh, yeah, just the very thing they wanted. And I have a feeling it won't be the thing that they wanted at all. So I'm looking forward to reading more of these dipping in and out. I think what I'm going to do, I don't have it with me, but um, is start Where Angels Fear to Tread by Ian e. Forster, um, which is a book actually that Tamor Sumru recommended for me. And uh, so I'll be part of another vlog. But I feel like that is short and sharp and I can read it on the train as I'm going through the Tuscan hills and everything. It all feel very apt because it's set in Tuscany. I still have that to dip into as well. But now I need to sort of pack and stuff and then I think we're gonna get some breakfast goods, sort out packing, and then our um, Airbnb. Do you call them landladies? What do you call them? Anyway, she's very kind of said we can check out late. I wonder if she'd let me take this headboard with me because I am absolutely obsessed. And those lamps are really lovely as well. It's just the sort of Nana Chic I like. Have I said that already? I'm obsessed with Nana Chic. Um, and then we'll get some lunch out and then get the train to Pisa and then the train to the airport and just very leisurely day. So there we are. I know... I, I think it's weird, isn't it? Like, I'm sad it's the end of the holiday, but also really happy to go home. And I don't like to feel sad when I've had a lovely time. I just like to think, oh, wasn't that a great holiday? And it has been a lovely holiday. Anyway, I'll talk to you later, anon, wherever I may be. It might even be when I get home. I have popped. Tell me about it on the shelves here. I have to say, I am tempted by Cream Puff Murder by Joanne Fluke. It's got recipes in it and everything. And I used to be called Cream Puff. The nickname I once had.
Hey up everyone, it is now Thursday lunchtime. I'm back, as you can see, although you probably guessed that from the landing footage from yesterday. Um, I'm back at work and fighting off the holiday blues. Although actually I have to say, a couple of people have said to me, and I find this a really odd expression anyway, but like, oh, you're really sad that you're back. But when I was on the train yesterday, leaving Luca, I wasn't sad because I felt like I'd had a really good holiday. I'd really made the most of the time that I was there. I'd done lots, but not done too much. Yeah, it was just a corking break and I really, yeah, I know I'll be back as well to look, well, I hope I'll be back. I mean, I really want to be back to look after Etta's bookshop. I've told Julia I will, but maybe it's Etta that I should have told I would. Anyway, so I'm back, but I did read another book yesterday, so I thought I would talk about that, have a little recap over the other books and uh, round this vlog off. So the book that I last said I was going to be reading was Where Angels Fear to Tread by E.M. Forster. I've had a bit of a bad relationship with Forster before as I was taught him at A-levels, which I quit. We just had to read the same segments of A Room with a View over and over and over again, although I do remember watching the film and liking it because there was quite a lot of naked men. So there we are, peaks and troughs, or every cloud has a silver lining, one or the other. Although peaks and troughs, slightly rude when we're talking about naked men. Moving on, let's move on. Let's not talk about that, move on. I started this on the train because I thought that'd be perfect with the Tuscan countryside going along. And I enjoyed the first chapter, However, I then started to get a bit bogged down in it quite quickly. So what I did instead was switch to the audiobook, which is read by Stephen Fry. Now, I don't know what this next statement I'm about to make says about this book. However, Stephen Fry could make the dullest thing on earth really fabulous to listen to. And with the voices and everything, he did bring this to life. And what I've noticed, interestingly, is... I can't really listen to fiction on audio and it's one of those things where I get asked so many times to listen to an audiobook version of a, a book and I'm like oh it just doesn't work for me that I feel like I'm on repeat but there is it seems an exception to the rule and that is classics because I remember when I read Vanity Fair with the wonderful Ben of Doom Antidote I listened to a lot of that on audio and that really worked for me and I don't know if it's because it's a bit like the oral version of watching, I wanted to giggle and I'm such a child, but the oral version of watching a Sunday night classic adaptation, it feels a bit like that. So this is all, well, what is this about? It's about a young woman who has been married and her husband has died and she still lives with her in-laws and she goes, she's become a bit restless and they're a bit worried that she's going to do something wrong so they send her to Italy because they think that'll be the perfect thing. It turns out to be the completely and utterly wrong thing because she meets an absolute dastardly what's it and basically gets married there. Now that kind of is roughly the first and second chapter of the book and then we follow on from there from the perspective of her mother-in-law, her, is it now her sister or her sister-in-law and her niece and her uh, mm, this is where I got a bit confused because there's a lot of characters and it wasn't I wasn't quite sure who was who even though I was listening to it and you would hear the names over and over again anyway she I thought was a fascinating character I will say Ian Forster surprised me slash shocked me shocked the mm, out of me actually I did proper two jaw drops with some things that happened here that I won't spoil and please don't spoil in the comments down below but suffice to say if you know you know and I thought that was clever but I also, well, the first time I thought it was clever because it was such a, oh my goodness. And then the second time I thought it was kind of a bit of a heartless and unnecessary way out of a novel. So that's how I feel about this. I need to give it a bit more thought because also I will be talking about this in another video because this is one of Tamor Sumru's recommendations that he did for me. And I actually feel a little bit unfair with the selection of his books he gave me because they were all debuts, not his absolute or like not even absolute favourites, but like some recent favourites that he would recommend. So maybe we should refilm with that as the brief because it's hard with like some debuts. One of the things that I love about debuts is that they'll have everything in them and that can make them really, really like compulsive to read and you can't get enough. This I feel like had loads in it and some of it was really good stuff. Like some of Ian Forster's comedic moments are brilliant there's a few set pieces that really really made me laugh and sort of poke fun at society and then other elements I just thought were really over dramatic and not in a good way like I can live for a little bit of drama and melodrama I've got no problem with that but I found this extreme and I also found some of the dialogue endless and some of it quite pointless 
And actually it felt really like this should have been a short story. So there we go. Not my favorite, as you can tell. Um, however, let's recap and we're gonna go backwards. So I haven't read any more of Catastrophe and Other Stories by Dino Bazzati. And I was going to wait until I'd read this and then wrap this video up. However, I don't want to rush these because every single one I've enjoyed so far, which is super duper rare in a collection that you love every single one, like four or five in, and I'm hoping to carry on doing so. So I'm hoping to read this by the end of the month because then I can include it in my wrap up. However, I am really, really reminding myself that I am not reading to vlog or reading to make content. I am making content out of what I'm reading. So I have to remind myself of that quite a lot. Anyway, there we go, there's that one. The DNF. Troubling Love by Anna Ferrente. I don't want to say me and Ferrente are over because I did really love The Lost Daughter. However, I don't think you have to love every author's book. I think it's something that can happen many times where you love one author, uh, no, where you love one book by an author and then don't like any of their others. I think Anna Ferrente is an author that I admire, but from afar overall. That's probably how I put it. I'm not going to rush to read more of her books. Like I said, I've got Days of Abandonment on the shelf, so at some point when the mood takes me, then I might head back to her, but I'm not, I'm not propelled or compelled. Wow, I love those words at the moment. I'm not, like, gagging to read more of her, which I kind of was after I read The Lost Daughter, so there we go. And then, last but not least, but here is the cover that I bought when I was last in Italy, not the one that you'll have seen in the vlog because I left that one at the apartment. This is Neves by Sasha Naspini, or Tell Me All About It, or Tell Me About It, as the new title with the cover with the chicken on is. I have thought about this book a lot since I read it, and it's grown and grown on me, actually. I think the way that... I think the way that Naspini manages to create a ca these two characters through a telephone call and all the secrets they reveal and gives real insight to other characters around them, I thought was brilliant. I love the way that it surprised me a lot, which actually harks to the way that each short story has surprised me in this so far. And I know I'll be thinking about Neves as a character for a very long time. So yeah, that is my thoughts on that. And I do really, really want to read more of Nespini's works. I have seen, I think Oxygen is translated into the UK. And when I was in some of the bookshops in Luca, they had a new novel by him. So there we go. Oh, the sun has decided to make an appearance to make the lighting go crazy just before I finish off this vlog. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you like coming in on a little holiday with me. Got another one coming so we'll take you along for that and may even have some sort of themed reading planned for then. But before the sun, well frankly, gets too much, like a little bit, not too much, which is odd considering where we're going on holiday next where it's going to be absolutely sun fantastic and hopefully fantastic but I will speak to you all in another video very very soon and let me know in the comments down below anything you would like to see in other vlogs going forward any videos you'd like to see on the channel over the forthcoming weeks and months and I will do my best I'll speak to you all soon bye